I'd like to welcome everybody to the 2021 edition of the CC125 final demos. Um, thank you all for being able to join in live and watch the demos with us and celebrate the end of, of 125 and the end of the academic year as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a brief introduction of the class, how it works. Many of you um, have already seen the demos before um, and know how it works, but I'm sure hopefully there are some people out there where this is the, their first time. And so for those folks, I'm going to tell you what the class is like because it's a very unusual class and sort of give you an overview of what it's like to go through the quarter and what these uh, student groups are able to accomplish. And then after I'm done, um, we will transition to having each of the groups demo the game that they have designed and implemented this quarter. And so you'll have to put up with me for about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll get to the exciting part, which is the students actually demoing. Okay. Now, 125 is a, is a very different kind of course compared to the other sort of typical computer science courses we teach. Um, the has a, a few interesting goals. One of the goals is to have the students experience design implementing a project that is much, much larger than anything they have done before. So we really want to stretch what it is that the students um, have done and have them accomplish something that they've never accomplished before. So it's a monumental project experience. And then another interesting aspect of the course is they have to work in large groups. So on average, the groups are about six students each, and they have to work together um, on this complex project all quarter long. And, um, you know, they've done group projects before, but usually there was smaller groups and not for a project that lasts for, for so long. Um, so it's one of the goals of 125 is very much to have this group experience. Now, of course, the, the challenge is, is that we're doing everything remotely, and everybody here has been doing this for well over a year. Um, and so, you know, the, the reality is, is that I think we're all tired of having um, to do everything remotely and sort of alone, so to speak. And so the, the next best thing that we can do is just join each other online, just like we're doing now. Okay, another key challenge of the course is the students are designing and implementing these, these complex systems. Um, so they're distributed systems, they have client and servers, they have real-time performance guarantees, everything needs to be interactive. Um, it's a very, very complex system that they are implementing, as they have discovered. Um, that complexity comes with a lot of challenges to overcome, and what's really impressive is seeing the, all of the students overcome all of those challenges. And so, when teaching this course, my goal actually is to have the students learn what it's like to design and implement these complex distributed systems um, and sort of all of the, um, the challenges that, that you face once you start designing complex applications that are spanning multiple machines and need to communicate with each other um, very, very, under very, very tight timing guarantees. So that's, that is my goal as, as the teacher. And the general approach for doing this, though, to try to make it a fun experience for the students is this complex distributed system that they're designing and implementing happens to be a multiplayer 3D game. Um, and so the students um, think in terms of building this game, and that's what they've done. And when you see these games being demoed, that is what um, they have accomplished. But also keep in mind that that these multiplayer network 3D games are actually very complex software systems. And what they have accomplished in, in completing their projects is implementing successfully these complex software systems. And that's the, that's the really exciting part. Okay, so one of the things that, that I want you to keep in mind once we start demoing the games and you see uh, what it is the students have been able to accomplish is that everything that you're witnessing once you see the, these games being played is entirely driven by the creativity and the skills of the students themselves. 
So the students, you know, we're building a, a multiplayer interactive 3D game. They don't get to use a game engine to do this. They have to build the game engine. So they're building the game engine, they're building the network protocol, the client and server, the graphics engine, all of the graphics effects, all of the models, everything that it goes into the game, they are doing themselves. And they're doing this in under 10 weeks, right? Because we're on the quarter system, we don't have very much time. And so it's truly incredible what it is the students are able to accomplish in implementing these games in such a short amount of time and doing everything from scratch. And I really want to emphasize that it is the students. It's not me. I'm the one who just sort of sets up the framework for the course, but the students are the one who execute on everything. And it's incredibly impressive to see. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to give you just a little bit of a, of, of a sense of what it's like from my perspective as the instructor in teaching this course to give you some insight as to sort of how the course goes. And you know, normally we would be teaching this course in person and the way the course runs is that um, we don't actually do lectures uh, like we normally do in a class. What we do is we set up group meetings every week. And so Edward, the TA and I meet with every group every week and we go over um, what it is they've been doing and what they're gonna be doing next and talk about problems, and all this kind of fun stuff. And normally if we were in person, the group meetings would look like this. We'd be in the lab, everybody would be sitting down together, and we'd be meeting together. This is a screenshot from, from when actually Edward undertook the course, and this is his group. Since we're online, we don't have that luxury. So let me show you sort of from my perspective what it's like meeting with all of the groups every week. Okay, so here's group one, everybody in group one. And group one is going to be the group that's going to be kicking up all the demos in just a short amount of time. Um, and one thing I, you know, to keep in mind about Group One's game is they have donuts. And so this entire quarter, every time that we've been going over their game, I've been craving donuts. And I still haven't actually met that crave yet. So that'll be something for summer. Um, then we have Group Two. And Group Two, for whatever reason, um, likes to see red, although they're the sort of friendliest and happiest group that, that we have. So uh, they're a lot of fun. They have a, a great game that highlights uh, aspects of UCSD that I think everybody will enjoy. And then we have group three that has a really great um, hunter-based labyrinth game, just a really cool game idea. Um, and I have to say that, you know, as yet another sign of COVID, for example, Edward and I met with group three every week, and Alan in particular, we've been meeting with him every week, and I still don't know what Alan looks like because he doesn't have a camera. Okay, and with group four, group four has, has this amazing blend of 2D and 3D art, which is just incredible. Um, and it's gonna be great when you're able to see it. Um, lots of folks in group four. And then we have group five. I don't know where to start with group five. There's a lot that could be said about group five, but I'll just put it this way, which is that meeting with group five was always an interesting experience every week. I was, they were the last one, so it was always fun to end with meeting with group five. Okay, now one of the things that I have the, the students do as they go through the quarter is before our group meetings, everybody has to write up weekly reports. So they have to talk about their development experience on a week by week basis, and this essentially forms a developer diary for them across the entire quarter. And it helps Edward and I sort of keep track of what everybody in all the groups are doing and as a basis for giving feedback. Um, but it also actually provides uh, some insight as to what the, what's the students are, are dealing with and, and tackling with. Um, and there are lots of different themes that, that become very apparent. Um, and this year, I just wanted to choose a few quotes to give you a sense of what the, the students were, were having fun with. And, and this time around, um, I just want to emphasize that, you know, there are many aspects to game development and what the students have learned is that each of those aspects winds up being challenging in its own right. So when it comes to the network, um, you know, it's very easy to get that first connection up and running between a client and server. And then going beyond that, there can be a lot of fun challenges in doing that. And 
across all of the groups, all of them have, um, you know, more or less similar experiences and sort of struggling with the network. And I think, for example, Shane and group five um, uh, fell in love with Boost um, during the quarter, very much so. And then, of course, animations, um, you know, wind up being a hallmark, especially of modern games. But animations are quite challenging both to do from an artist's perspective, as well as getting them up and running inside the game. And um, let's see, collision detection, which is what runs on the server to decide whether or not somebody's hitting into a wall or a tree or um, if you fire something and hit somebody. Um, collision detection is all math, and that math can be a lot of fun to do. And of course, there's um, a lot of optimizations that go in, especially on the client side when it comes to graphics, when you start adding lots and lot of gra graphical features in there. Um, for example, I think uh, Group 2 learned that it's really easy to, uh, to allocate a lot of memory over time. And then I think uh, um, Sheila sort of, you know, in terms of debugging all of this, has a pretty deep observation about um, the, the fun and challenges of trying to debug uh, software projects of this complexity. Um, it just winds up being a, a very, very difficult and challenging thing to do. And the impressive and amazing thing is that the students are all able to pull it off. Okay, so on that note, um, I, I, to try to emphasize what it is the students have been able to accomplish, you know, here's a bunch of um, clippings of, of concept art from the students at the very beginning of the quarter. So this is roughly speaking week two-ish, all right? And, you know, this is where all the games begin. They just begin with the ideas of what it is the students have in mind in terms of the games that they want to create. And then they spend the rest of the quarter actually building those, those games and, and turning their ideas into reality. And the before and after is just incredible, right? So this is where they're starting from. And then by the end of the quarter, this is what it looks like. And they have four players playing together on a server in playing their game. It's just amazing what it is that they're able to accomplish. Every year, I'm just always amazed. Okay, and then we get to the end of the quarter. Uh, we've run out of time. I think the last commits into the repos were earlier this afternoon, and everything is done, and it's time to do the demos. But the one, the one thing that always tells me when a group is ready to go is when they transition to, to playing the game. Right? So when groups start playing the game as much as they start hacking, spend time hacking on the game, I know they are ready to go. So when, when groups are staying up late at night playing and they're having fun, they're, you know, giving the thumbs up or, you know, they might be sleeping. Um, but that's when we know that they're ready to go. Okay. So um, we're getting to the end of, of the intro. So we'll be uh, switching to the demos in just a second. Before we do, I just want to acknowledge a lot of people who help make 125 a reality. Without, without all of this help, um, we wouldn't be able to make it happen. So Cindy really helps us out with uh, the main server that is hosting all of the, the web content, for example, for all of the groups. And then um, in Cal IT, Hector and Max and Ruben, Alex, Aureli, Megan, all, everybody coming together and helping us out with these final demos is just fantastic, especially in these times when we have to do everything online. Um, to make these this live demo happen, um, actually there's a lot of complex infrastructure, uh, so a lot of plumbing to make all of this work out, and they're the ones who make it happen. So thank you very much for that. And then I also want to do a shout out to Sterling uh, for some last minute uh, sort of debugging and hacking I'm RBIing for one of the groups, really appreciate that. And then also for Wolfgang and Manas for um, doing a guest lecture in the course, um, just to make it concrete. So here's Wolfgang sort of talking about uh, um, doing cross-platform ray tracing in their, their Forge platform. And of course, um, I wanna end by thanking Edward, who is our TA. Um, 
on behalf of everybody in the course, Edward, thank you very, very much for all of the time and all of the help that you've given the students and the help you've given me as well. Um, it has been, it is always great working with you. And in addition to, you know, all of your, uh, your hacking smarts, uh, you know, it's just great how much enthusiasm you bring every day to every effort that you do. It's just great, fantastic. So if we were live in Atkinson Auditorium, then um, I would have everybody applaud for you, but we're online, so can't really do that. But on behalf of everybody, thank you very, very much. Okay, so here's the plan. Um, we're just going to start uh, going from group to group and in, in demoing their games. And what's going to happen for each group is that when every group begins, they're going to start out by just talking about who else, who is in the group, and then the story behind their game. What was their inspiration? What type of game is it? Um, what is it that they want to try to do? And then um, after doing that, we'll actually launch into them doing a live demo of playing the game. And uh, while they are demoing their games, towards the end of the live demo, we can start fielding questions. So feel free to, for those who are on Twitch, logged into Twitch, um, to ask questions and we will have the students in the group field them as we can and time permitting. 